Hello, welcome to the Ada Believer channel. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, my name's Ada, and so I call this the Ada Believer channel because I'm a believer. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. If it's your first time, welcome. Uh, I write a little songs, and or God gives me little tunes, and I call them tunettes mostly. And I sing them to encourage myself in the Lord, and sometimes I share them. So I thought, well, I'll just share these songs I have on here. I sang this one last Sunday, just shared it at church Sunday morning. And so I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and sing this little song while I got the chance. I'm so glad that YouTube is still open for us, and we're living in a free free society that we can speak. You know, it's getting closer and closer to shutting down free speech and watching what you say and America is rapidly changing and so pray for our country and just want to encourage you to vote the Bible when this election comes up in November the 3rd. It's just it's less than two weeks away. So vote the Bible no matter what you do. We just, some of the things I was looking at, we, ha we have choices. Some stands for abortion and killing babies, you know, and that is biblically a no-no. That is an abomination to God. He said he, he loves those that, that, that protects the innocent, you know, and he hates those that, that kills the innocent. So a baby is supposed to be safe in the womb no matter what, and that is a God-given life, that he's the creator of life, and it begins at conception. It's just a difference of size. So that of a baby life, we, we don't want to, we don't want to be guilty of saying, yes, that's okay, do it. So God will hold us responsible. If you're doing it out of ignorance and you don't know, I think God, too much is given, much is required. So if you know better, you'll be held responsible if you vote for somebody to, that, that is pushing that. We got a man that's standing against it and a party that's standing against it. So I encourage you to vote the Bible. And he's very constitutionalist. He wants to uh, judge by the Constitution, stand by the laws that's been laid down for so long ago. And we got some that's wanting to change those things and do away with the old fashioned way. Uh, he, this man that we have now supports law and order. The other one supports rioting and burning and stealing and thieving and killing. And they do it very stealthy wise. They just don't stop it. And when you don't stop it and you send the power of you to stop it, then you're wrong. So uh, let's support law and order and life. Let's stand for life, not death. And we need to stand for free speech and We've got a party that's willing to shut the economy down, shut the churches down, shut family gatherings to down. And a lot of this has been politicized and stealthy made a, an issue. And I know that this is a real uh, virus, but it's also fixable. It's also treatable. And for the, so those of the, us that's elderly, we have to take special care, but we still have to trust the Lord and claim Psalms 91. He said he would not let the things come nigh your dwelling and you can plead the blood over yourself. And be careful. I just say, vote, your, vote the Bible when you vote. And I'm going to get off of that because I just had to say that. It's so close to the election. And I know we got some that vote the culture over the Bible, and that's wrong. That's wrong. God's going to hold us require, uh, responsible and judge us for what we've done. Well, the little song I had was what about one God, and uh, it's about Deuteronomy 6, 4. It's, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And the Israeli people, the Jewish nation, hold that very high up. They teach that to all their children all the time, like the Bible says to do. And that's why they had a hard time accepting Jesus as, as a God or Messiah, because they just believed in one God. And to them, they, he was claiming he was a man claiming to be God, and they just could not accept that. But down here in this scripture, it says, Whoever so denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Because in... Uh, uh, first, Second Corinthians, I think it is, 5.19, it says, To wit, that God was in Christ, 
reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ. If you believe that Jesus was God, if you believe that Jesus was man, I like the way one teacher explains it. He said there is something about Jesus that was God or something about him that was man. That man was the begotten son. That part that's God about him is the father. The Father was in Christ reconciling the world to, to Himself. One God. And it's here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And that's Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. That's Jewish. I like that, so I learned it. I don't know if I say it just right, but that's the way I say it. Uh, it says in Revelations 1.8 that He says, I'm the Alpha and I'm the Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come. The Almighty. One God that was, that is, and that is to come. And he said, I am the Alpha, and Revelation 22, 13, he confirms it again, because Scripture confirms Scripture, and Scripture interprets scriptures, Scripture. In Revelation 20, 13, it says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And he said he's going to send the Comforter. Jesus was talking to him. And he says, in John 14, 25, he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which is what overshadowed Mary, and she became with child. Was it the Father that overcome Mary, or was it the Holy Ghost that overcome Mary? I think it was one and the same. God is a Spirit, and God is holy. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which is the same term, same same meaning, overshadowed Mary. And it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he that te shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Praise the Lord. If you've read it, he'll bring it back to you. <laughs> and uh, the Holy Ghost, that is God. That is God. None other but God. He's a Holy Spirit. And he's the Father. He's a creative Father. And... Uh, it says in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. One God, one faith, one baptism. Okay, it says, uh, and Colossians 2, 9, it says that in Jesus, it says, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So all the power of God, all the anointing of God, everything was in Christ. Not the whole quality, quantity of God, but the quality of God was in Christ. That man that He ordained to, He was the image of the invisible God. And he walked about reconciling people. And in Ephesians 4, and he also had carried the, on the family name. It says in Colossians 3, 14 and 15, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Okay, the Father's name he passed on to his Son. Jesus clearly said, I come in my Father's name. And he declared it. Declared it. So, my father's name was my name. I took my father's name, so Jesus gave his name <laughs> to his son. And you know what? It becomes the family name with us, too, because when we get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we go down, and it's an invisible spiritual work in our life, and we're, we're taking on that name at baptism. And so it all works together. When you repent, you obey the scriptures and get baptized in Jesus name then you go on and you wait for regeneration that's your redemption right there the blood of Jesus when you repent but you go on to regeneration which is Pentecost the Holy Ghost being poured out on you and that's the new birth and we all want that but I'm going to go back and share this little tune that I wrote and I I hope you all have an open mind you can follow me along on some of these scriptures a lot of them may not agree, and a lot of them may not understand, a lot of them might not care, and some of them this might shed some light, I don't know. I had didn't learn this overnight, so 
and I might not be the one to teach it, but it's in my heart, so that's what I'm given. The song I have is, Oh, Jesus, 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 you are the mighty one. <clears throat> Let me start over. I'm getting a little low. Oh, Jesus, 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 you are the mighty one. The Father in creation, redemption in the Son. Oh, Jesus, 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 the Holy Ghost in the church. Jesus, 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 you are the last and first. He is the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. And his name is Jesus. When you have the Son, you have the Father. And that's what the whole Testament, New Testament is about, is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of His Son, the Messiah, God in the flesh, reconciling the world unto Himself. I, it's such a joyful subject, and I hope I have made good sense here that I have not confused people more than ever. And I just... I just like to share what I've got. So it makes me happy and that joy of the Lord is what I need now more to carry me through these hard days. And uh, I appreciate your prayers. Hope you come back. Hope you like my channel and give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel to grow. And uh, I, I have other little songs I'm gonna share too. So I'll be back, Lord willing, <laughs> and the creek don't rise. So you all have a blessed day and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.